Realistic Strawberry Poison Dart Frog Acrylic Painting Tutorial by Hot Pink Zebra Paper. Hi guys, in today's video I'm going to be showing you a really, really cute little frog painting. This one is fairly small, I think it's an 8x10 canvas actually, which is, or maybe it's a 9x12, I don't know, but it's not very big. It's just a fun project to work on. It's got a little strawberry poison dart frog on a log with the reflection of like it's floating along a river or something. I absolutely love frogs, I love everything about frogs, so I was so excited to do this painting and do a kind of frog that I haven't ever done before. So I hope you guys like this as much as I do, and don't forget to click subscribe to all my future videos as well. I'm going to begin by doing the water of, uh, of the little scene that I have. So I'm going to use a dark green both above and below, so the reflection and, um, and behind my frog. Let's just add that dark green color. The first coat didn't really cover super well, so I'm going to add a second coat. And behind him, behind my frog, in the second coat, I blended in a couple shades of green, some black, some brown, and then just very smoothly brushed those out so it had a nice little kind of swirly look to it and then on the bottom I went from a green to a black so I darkened it towards the edge of the painting and now I'm going to be doing the reflection of the log on the water so I have a few shades of brown as well as the dark green that I used initially for the water and I'm doing this and you don't want it to have as much detail as you intend to use on the log that's above and if you want to do the the actual log before you do the reflection you can definitely do that I, I mean, usually when you see people and you hear people painting, they say work from the top of the canvas down, and that's <laughs> probably really good advice, um, especially if you're planning on doing this all in one sitting so you don't smear over something, especially if you're doing oil painting. I don't usually follow the rules with anything like that. I kind of do things differently usually. So I did not do that. However, I started with my reflection and I kind of liked that I started with the less detailed side of things and then worked my way towards the more detailed for whatever reason that seems to work well for me uh, of course you can do this however you like but then i'm going to be painting the log that is the actual log not the reflection keep in mind that this one you do want to have more detail in you do want to look more crisp you do not want to blend in any of your green so you want it to be more of a a pure brown color i guess if you want to think of it that way so you don't want to kind of green it up a little so just keep it that those nice warm cherry browns that you have and two layers of color. So I started out with just a coat of brown to have a base coat down on the canvas. And then I went through and I started blending in the lows and the highs of, of the log here and there. Nothing too detailed quite yet, but then go through and with more color and more details, add some texture. I like to add some... I like to use diluted paint to add some of my texture. So I don't like to use... Uh, try to do it all in one layer on the canvas. I like to do kind of build up my texture and my detail. So I have some black little textures on there and then I'm going to use some of a lighter, more caramely brown to add something on there. You're also on this log because while it is, it's not a dry log, so you want to add some white highlights to it and some bright white highlights to it so it looks really nice and wet and glossy. So don't forget to add those. So after you have all that, you can also add a couple little cracks in your log if you'd like. So some skinny little black lines running through it to give it just as much detail as you want. You can keep going through and add add more and more and more, however, however detailed you want to go with it. So there's some of my white highlights to give it that look. You also want to add some white highlights in the line between the log and the reflection so that it's got this little kind of a bubbly look right on the edge. So now I'm going to be painting my frog that's in my reflection. And same thing, you want to add some of that green into it, some of that dark green. So blend some of that color into it in all sections of your frog. Blend that dark green into it so it has just a slightly dingier hue than the actual frog. As well as keep it a little bit less detailed, a little smoother looking. So just kind of bear all that in mind. It's a good thing to keep in the back of your head that the reflection, you just have these couple different rules to apply. And so just keep working on that. Same thing I did the reflection and then I did the actual frog. One thing that you could do, which I did, is I flipped my canvas around so I wasn't painting an upside down frog. I flipped it around so that he was right side up in the reflection and you can just spin your canvas. Before I started videotaping my tutorials, I spun my canvas constantly. I was like never painting it where it was right side up. And then as soon as I started videotaping it and I was watching the video back and I was like, oh, this is awful. You can't watch it. You'd be sick because the canvas was constantly in a different position. And so I've worked really hard to stop doing that. 
and um, but if I wasn't on video you can bet that this canvas would be upside down and right side up and all over the place just to give myself a more comfortable angle to work on so I do recommend doing that if you guys aren't on camera flip your canvas any direction whatever way you want I always say that you want your brush to be pulling towards you so especially with something like fur texture it's really helpful to be having to have the canvas at whatever angle makes it the most comfortable to be working on so there's that little piece of that little piece of Katie wisdom in there so keep adding little subtle soft details add some white highlights on your frog so because you know he's kind of a moist little critter had some nice in their eyes they've got kind of a classic brown um, brown iris black pupil look to them almost kind of human-esque so that's that's kind of a interesting thing I a lot of times when I think of frogs I think of them as having kind of like snake little pointy pupil going on but these ones don't have that nearly as much so that's that's interesting so now I'm going to be painting my top frog same thing it has um, don't add any of that green as your reflection so keep all of that away and add more detail keep all the colors brighter so on my lower frog I put a little bit more purple into the legs a little bit more I have like a dark indigo purple and I used a lot more of that on the reflection than I did I did use some on the actual frog but you know you kind of want to cut back on it a little just keep adding all of your details all of the different colors I also add a little bit more of like a yellow tone an orangey brightness to my frog on top and the weird thing for this painting is I used several different reference photos so I used a whole stack full of, yeah it was probably like a dozen photos that I was working from with this and the original concept idea the original concept photo that I was looking at was a different kind of frog and they sit differently and they look differently and everything is different about it was a red-eyed tree frog and they just they have a very different stature than these guys so it took my brain a lot of a lot of processing to switch it from that frog to this frog so that was certainly a bit of a bit of work that was probably the hardest part was just getting my brain to wrap around the fact that I was doing a different frog than I was looking at the first time when I went to look at my stash of paint to grab colors that I thought were appropriate for the for this piece I grabbed all the colors for my red eye for the red-eyed tree frog that was in the photo and I get back upstairs and I was setting my stuff down I was sitting down to start working I was like wait a second this is not the colors for a strawberry dart frog and I had to go back and get all different colors of paint and I was like you ding dong you knew what you were doing so there's me and my silliness on the other frog I forgot to mention this they have these wonderful black spots on them so you can't forget to add your black spots one thing you have to keep in mind is that you want the black spots on this frog to match the reflection so I took a picture with my phone of my other frog so that I could flip it around and I could look at it better and I could match my spots easier add lots and lots of white highlights highlight this guy to the maximum because you want him to look really shiny and really wet and that's just going to make him look extra amphibious so i hope you guys like this painting as much as i do i am a frog fanatic from way back i absolutely love frogs and everything about them so i hope you guys if you are a frog fanatic like me like this guy as much as i do and share um, any comments or questions or recreations with me i would love to see them and i'll see you in my next video bye